The Ebony State Police Command has debunked reports of the purported abduction of Labour Party senatorial candidate for Ebony South District, Linus Okorie. Spokesman for the command, that superintendent of police, Chris Anyawu, said in a statement that Okorie was arrested and not abducted, according to unverified sources. The police spokesman also confirmed that Okorie, a former member of the House of Representatives, was arrested over drug-related matters, in addition to several other offences. The former lawmaker had also been invited by the Security and Intelligence Bureau of the Command over a petition written by the Commissioner for Justice and Attorney General, which alleged that he was spreading fake news against Governor Dave Umahi. To get a bit more insight on this, we're now being joined by the Ebony State Commissioner for Information, Uchin Naoji. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on Newsday. So, we, on one hand, we hear drug-related charges, spreading fake news, and another, and uh, also inciting violence. What's this arrest really about? Bearing in mind that this is coming as this lawmaker contests for the same Senate seat as Dave Umahi. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to hear from the side of what is telling them. Uh, we need to appreciate that uh, whether we are doing politics or any other thing, that we need to know that there is a difference between crime, politics, and other forms of life. Uh, in the circumstance, I would say that uh, Lionel's Abbott and Curry uh, had so many outstanding criminal matters that he was meant to come and uh, explain himself about and he kept avoiding the police because in a petition written by the Commissioner for Justice and Honorable Attorney General of the State the attempted start there of March 2022 which was acknowledged by the Office of the Honorable Commissioner for or the Commissioner of Police on the fourth day of March. Uh, a lot of um, uh, issues, points of petition were raised and uh, they say they did invite uh, Honorable um, Taba Okore Linus, and he never did come. Even from my office, uh, the team, the crack team that is responsible for cracking uh, those uh, in the right to cyber crimes, they had to write a petition to the Honorable Commission, I mean, Commissioner of uh, Police in January 2020. And um, this man did not avail himself. According to the police, they looked for him. He was nowhere to be found. And coupled with what happened recently, he had, the man has a club, what they call a city hall. And that club, since he established it, it is not functional except that they use that club for, you know, night, you know, activities. Uh, that may not be very legitimate. So in one of uh, the operations of, uh, in the world, they got a young man that was into drug trafficking that was using that facility as a, you know, a, a, a harboring point. And uh, they arrested the person. And as I speak, the NTLEA uh, got wind of the situation and got the guy into their custody and was charged to court. And he confessed, yes, I was into this illegitimate business. And the guy has been convicted now. So there was a, an information, security information that came to the Bubango security outfit. And they were like, we gave for this young man. Eventually they found him. That was on the 16th day of, uh, of October, that was on Sunday. And they lied with their powers under the Bubango agency law uh, of a body state. They had the powers to arrest. They had, they had the powers to profile. And after profiling, they were not hand over to the and that was what they did. And they did that without even infringing on the constitutional rights. Mr. Oji, 
The alarm was sounded by Linus Sokore's wife after he was accosted by Ebu Babe because it seemed there was a period that elapsed before he was handed over to the police. Why was there a delay between the time he was accosted and the time he was then officially handed over to the police? And the police also confirmed that he had been in the custody of Ebu Babe. Uh, Governor Umahi has expressed uh, on several occasions that when Ebu Babe accost uh, any suspected criminals, they're supposed to be speedily handed over to the police. Why the delay? Well, at all. And you will recall that the issue happened on Sunday, the 16th day of October. Uh, and uh, first thing in the morning, the following day, that was on Monday yesterday, uh, the police took charge of the situation. So finding does not necessarily mean that you just arrest and hand over. It means that you need to do a lot of documentation. You need to have your online report my statement about what happened so that there will be no issue of compromise and that is the very essence of that you know that and let me tell you under the powers of the Dubai, they have the, uh, the, the, the the right to keep it for some time to ask you questions to have their own record this thing can take some hours they need to call some some other witnesses and after that they now dust up their their file and answer we have to hand you over to the police. And don't forget, whatever you are doing must be in line with the provisions of the Constitution. In this case, the Constitution provides for 24 hours within which you can take somebody to court or take someone to the nearest, uh, maybe in this case, to the police. And it was not violated. So there was no delay at all in the set of stars. But truth be told, um, it, doesn't appear, it does appear as though due process was not followed. Ebubeagu was set up in 2021, I'm just taking the statement here, by governors of the five states in Southeast to help in the fight against insecurity in the region. And that was also glazed over by the um, spokesperson of the police when it came to confirming like the time of the arrest by Ebubeagu and the handover. So that in itself already is an indicator of a red flag. And whether we like it or not, Devu Mahi is always caught up in situations like this. I mean, it's convenient that this a man who was arrested is contesting for the same seat as he was. Many, or he is, many accusations have been made, you know, about him, um, you know, exploiting exploiting situations based on his position to to somewhat bully you know other people who are contesting for seats that he is also contesting for so it looks convenient that the timing of this arrest and the fact that it was made by Bubeagu and not the police so I still ask again what is this arrest really about yeah let me start by saying that um um, Honorable Linus Abayo Kore, to the best of my knowledge, is not a candidate of any political party. Um, they had a contest with one of the best uh, for the senatorial ticket of the Labour Party. And uh, they said he won. And when the best went to call the Federal High Court, the court uh, ruled or gave judgment in favor of his own position, that is, uh, the best. So he went and appealed. And the much we know, the man that is the candidate of the Labour Party is not Linus Sotore, but that's by the way. Let me mention that we have said that the matters that uh, Linus Sotore was meant to clear himself about, we are matters that happened that were brought before the police many months before even he became a candidate. That you are a politician, or that your candidate does not make you to be free from any crime that you have committed. It's definitely not. And we need at this point in time separate politics from crime. And let me say also that in a one state, forget about the insinuations, forget about all of those allegations and accusations. We are very democratic. In a one state, we have 13 number governorship and candidates. That is to say, 13 political parties in a one state moving freely with their candidates in all the levels of the contest. And there has not been any issue of, uh, you know, stopping anybody from carrying out his campaign. So in this case, uh, you cannot say that it was because of uh, the fact that he was to be a candidate that is Linus that made him to be, uh, you know, to, 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 to be arrested or to be reported to the police. 
So let us actually, I don't want to talk about the character of this, the man we are talking about, but if you want to know about his character, you can look at his profile, tell me who is his classmate. In secondary school, who is his classmate? The university has no classmates. So but let's not talk about that. He was in the National Assembly on two occasions. And if we are mindful, we can decide to say, tell us why you went there without telling us, you know, how you, how you became a, how you secured your certificate. But that is, by the way, what we are saying is that we have to know the truth. We have to be sure of whatever we are saying. And for the state appreciates democracy, appreciates every other person contest, contesting for any position uh, as far as we are concerned. All right, uh, let's shift our focus to uh, matters of law and order in the state, uh, specifically pertaining to Ebubagu, which uh, over the years we've seen numbers of, uh, you know, pockets of protests uh, against this group and complaints arising um, and accusations as well against this group. And of course, Governor Omahi has uh, also commended their work and said, uh, to quote him, they are doing a beautiful job. Uh, however, this brings this group into controversy again. Uh, what is the state? state doing to try and preserve the sanctity of the security work that this group is supposed to do uh, uh, without, uh, you know, negating their efforts by being constantly embroiled in these types of, uh, of issues? Yeah, let me tell you that uh, in politics, people say a lot of things. They are nothing to say against uh, how they are governing, the area of project implementation, area of development or transformation of this thing. So they are looking for abstract things. They are looking for just accusations that are unfounded, that are baseless. And let me tell you that just like you are doing, we need to verify any accusation. You know, they once said that Linus Abel Kore was uh, kidnapped. Some said he was abducted. But it eventually happened that he was not even kidnapped or was not abducted. So all of those accusations are mere accusations brought about by envy and jealousy. That's what I can tell you. Now, our relationship with um, Ebubag, yes, is an agency of state government. But you know that it is really having a, a, a regional coloration. That is to say, it is Southeast Security Africa, but it has a command in a body state. And I can say that they were established by the law of a body state, which has similar effect with all the laws on Ebubag in other um, parts of Southeast. And they have their powers, they have their limits. And any individual or group that, uh, you know, decide to offend, you know, any provision of the law establishing them will definitely be sanctioned. And of course, we give them orientation from time to time and we make sure that they know what they're doing. But let me say something. Let's, let's face the fact. In the whole of the Southeast, uh, but instead is the only place you can come and you can be rest assured that you are secure. In the day, the night, you walk. Even as a government functionary, you can walk in the night and nothing happens. There is no situation in a body state. And in a body state, you can be sure that you move around. There is no case of banditry. Have you ever heard of kidnapping? So they are trying to introduce political kidnapping. But it's not tenable in a body state. Have you ever heard of any sort of banditry? Except for case of community clashes arising from, you know, the fact that we are an agrarian state. People are really having contest over ownership of land. That's so, all. Apart from that, the body state is just a safe haven for investment, a safe haven for, you know, any, even for tourism. And I can tell you that the people of a body state are very much happy they are thrown with them. Well, you know, when it comes to Ebu Beago, there are many schools of thought. So they have been accused of, you know, um, taking laws into their own hands, you know, um, disrupting meetings, wreaking havoc here and there. So I'm just wondering if it might be time to review or place a limit on how far they can go in certain situations because the the reason for which or the objective for which they it, it sprung up in the beginning, they seem to be departing from that slowly but surely because no matter how you try to explain this or how much you praise them, it still doesn't make sense why they should, you know, arrest uh, a man based on allegations when they are not the police. They are simply meant to t ensure that insecurity is at an all-time low in those five states in which they're operating. Sure, you are totally correct. The law established in the Bible empowers them to arrest, empowers them to collaborate with the security agents, 
empower them to also ensure that the sensor movements, you know, to gather intelligence from all parts of the state, maybe collaborate with the government command in other states. And so even you as an individual, you have the right to have the powers to arrest under the constitution. So it's not out of place that they are arresting. But what is important is that they have not gone beyond the provisions of the law establishing them. The law says the moment you do profile, document, ask questions, then have the reason to hand over to the police. Then they arrest, and it happened that the person did not commit any wrong. The person was able to clear himself. Would they need to hand over to the police? The answer is no. They will need to say, okay, you are free, you can go. These are people that are made to protect uh, the lives and property of the people of a body state. They need to collaborate, and they are doing that effectively. And I've told you that if you go to IDP's record about crime, especially banditry among these uh, violent crime, and boy, is having one of the lowest crime records. So I don't know what you mean by saying that the body is overstepping or overstepping its bounds. Uh, but like I well, how was he? Yeah. How was Linus Sokori a threat to security at that time? If they were set up to ensure that insecurity is at an all-time low, I would like to know if you can answer that. That's completely fine. How was he a threat to security at that time? I, I didn't get you very well, please. How was Linus Okori a threat to security at the time of his of his arrest? by Abubiagu, they were set up to make sure that insecurity was at an all-time low. That's why I'm asking you if they're overstepping, because I, from, from the optics, it does not appear as though he was a threat to security, which is why the rumor sprung up that he was abducted. Anybody who does commit an offense... Allegedly. Away fugitively, allegedly, who allegedly commits an offense is a subject of investigation and the process of investigation starts with invitation in some cases and arrest in some cases and in this case the police had invited him several since january to he was always on the phone but the moving. police did not make the arrest mr ochina oji the police did not make the arrest he was invited by the police but that good made the arrest he wouldn't have, he would appear, you, 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 you can't understand the point I'm making. I say that the government is empowered under the law to make arrests. And I've told you the process that you can be invited and very really fair to, you know, that is a collaboration. What is like what the police are doing, the Bubago security officials are also doing. And being a collaborative thing, when they could not, because of the versiveness of uh, language, the Bubago happened to see them. This Bubago is always at work, day and night. If I tell you when this man was arrested, you would never greet him. In fact, you would never talk to him. If I tell you, the, and the person he was with, but we don't want to talk about that. It was his personal behavior and all of that. Yeah. But let me say that they have they did arrest and they pleased. They didn't do any other thing. And All right. They, the powers to they handed <laughs> over to the police. Thank and you. police is already prison. And after the if uh, Prima Fasche is established, what will happen? They will charge him to court. Yeah. That's that right. Thank that you for clarifying that, uh, Mr. Oji. Uchena Oji, that's a Bonyi State Commissioner for Information. Thank you for shedding more light on that situation.